So how is the Wimbledon preparation going? It's going great. Uh, Grigor, I think he's um, yeah, doing doing really well the last few months, slowly picking up a few wins here and there. Uh, the end of the clay court season was very positive, and now we see the start of the grass court season with Queens uh, playing five matches with okay. um, yeah, exactly what we were looking for, and he had a good uh, good training block with Jamie here in London uh, before the tournament, uh, and then obviously played some good matches there. So yeah, overall um, he's uh, yeah he's doing well, uh, preparing as good as he can, and and looking forward to the tournament starting on Monday. How do you rate his season so far? Yeah, I think he's done well. I think um, I think the last few years were a bit tricky for him. I think he, I think we actually looked at it the other day. He's getting like in between 20, 25 wins a year, and and if I'm not mistaken, I think he's on twenty two this year. So he's he's it's definitely better and 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 winning more matches. And I think his his training habits and his match habits are, are improving all the time. So I think it's uh, definitely better than than it has been the last two or three years for him. So I think we're we're we're, we're pretty happy with him. Yeah. Can you tell us how does a day in your life uh, looks looks like now in Wimbledon being part of uh, Team G? Um, yeah, I mean, you want to know about a particular day this week? So let's say in in the lead up to uh, in the lead up to the tournament. Um, so yeah, so for example, a day like today, he uh, he actually had the morning off, uh, which is rare. Uh, he he played Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so we decided to give him uh, Thursday morning off uh, to make sure that he had a bit of time for himself and and he didn't feel like he was rushing every day. But um, on a day like yesterday, that would be more similar to how most days are. Uh, he would wake up around seven thirty eight in the morning, uh, get some breakfast, uh, start his treatment. Uh, with you, with his chiropractor around uh, nine nine thirty, and then we either start our tennis practice around ten or eleven o'clock. Uh, be on court for a couple of hours, and then we usually make a decision if it's just a one block uh, day or if we're doing two blocks. So some days we were doing tennis first in the morning, and then having a break between tennis and fitness, and then doing fitness in the afternoon with uh, with Seb Durand with his fitness trainer. And uh, on a day like yesterday, it was different. We did uh, just one block, so we had tennis and fitness uh, together. Uh, so on a day that uh, he has two blocks, he will then finish tennis practice around 12.30, 1 o'clock, have a shower, have lunch, uh, and then come back to the gym around 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And then he has treatment afterwards. So he goes from 8 in the morning till 7 p.m. at night. Uh, and then obviously has dinner, and sometimes he even has train, uh, treatment after the dinner. So they're they're pretty long days. Uh, you usually when you start getting close to the events over the weekend, those days will start getting a little bit shorter, um, and then we'll try and, and manage his energy as much as we can. Yeah, and I think the the training, the actual training, is not so heavy, like really tough on legs and cardio and stuff, because a lot of that is in place already. He's in really good shape physically. He's been really good and much better again than last year, stronger and. And uh, so it's more like sharper and quality and playing points and um, yeah, getting him fresh for match day. Danny, in another interview, you said that uh, Grigor has all the weapons um, with which he can stop the young stars of the game. Can you explain that? Why do you think so? And uh, what was not enough to stop Alcaraz at Queensbrook? Yeah, what I meant by that is that he has the tools to counter their games. Uh, obviously, he he would need to do it at a very high level on 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 that given day when he plays against the top uh, the the guys that are at the top of the game. But I think he has a game style that is uh, different to to how most guys play nowadays, and it's a it's a game style that I would call it disruptive. So he can disrupt the rhythm uh, more than more than the the younger current guys can as as they all play an incredible game and, and a very powerful game uh, and also at the same time it's powerful and consistent uh, so that's the challenge nowadays that you're playing against younger guys that have more energy a lot of power and at the same time they're consistent so it's a uh, so but I think that with Grigor's game that has a, that has a lot more variety to it uh, I think he can disrupt their game. Uh, quite well, so so I think it's it's an interesting time for Grigor. I think he's playing against uh, most of the guys at the top of the game now. Has have a very similar game style, and I think he's one of the few guys that play a little bit more old school uh, and 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 that has uh, a couple extra tools to his game that that can disrupt the game for sure. But then he has to do it almost in a perfect way to beat to beat these guys because of how good they are. So I think 
the positive is that the tools are there to uh, to to uh, to make it challenging for for the guys that are up and coming now, but uh, we still need to build a, a base that is strong enough that can be sustainable throughout the whole match. Uh, to your question regarding the match against Alcaraz, I think uh, he was able to play uh, his game uh, through parts of the match, but not throughout the whole match. Uh, and then again, it's it's all about two things, how well you execute your game and how well the other guy counters your game. Uh, and I thought Carlos, uh, in the big moments in the match, I thought he countered Grigor's game very well, which can happen. And it's something that uh, that we all as a team have to accept, that uh, not every day the, other, the, the game will be as effective because you have the guy on the other side of the net, particularly with the top guys, that they can counter it uh, some days better than others. Uh, so I thought that, yeah, maybe Grigor uh, was not as consistent with his game style as he should have been. And then also when he was doing it well, uh, I thought Carlos managed managed uh, a good match. So, yeah, I think uh, an interesting time for him. I think there is a lot of opportunity, but uh, a, lot, a lot of work still to be done. A question to Jamie. Uh, what was your opinion of uh, Grigor before you started uh, to work with him? And is there something that he surprised you? I think the, the the opinion I've obviously seen him on the tour for various years. He's a guy like like Danny saying with a lot of you know he has a lot of talent, a lot of natural ability, a lot of variation. So I think from my side it was you know good fun and exciting, um, you know, and believing in that game style. I think that can like Danny says is disruptive to a lot of the players now. I can see that game style being very successful. So that was very motivating for me and, and exciting to be part of. Um, Something that surprised me about him, um, I mean, I think in terms of his career, the last two or three years, I wasn't. I mean, obviously, I follow following him, but not in that closely, and I didn't wasn't quite aware that he, you know, been struggling a little bit as much as he as he was um, with different areas of his game and his and his. Um, yeah, how his career was going. He'd obviously dropped in his ranking, you know, to 30-something. He's now back to in the 20s, I think. He's like 20 in the race this year. I think 21 yeah, or so, 22 um, in the race, yeah. Yeah, I maybe was a little bit surprised how, how uncomfortable he'd been feeling in his, in his tennis career in the last couple of years. So that was a challenge as well for me to with the team to try and work together and try and get him back on track. So I think that was, that was a surprise. But in terms of his ability... Look, I, it, it, there's moments that he's playing through the, the year in matches that is is of the highest level. You know, some of the best players in the world, he's capable of playing that level. I mean, it was... Uh, uh, but I, I think I was aware of that. I think it's just about working on more the consistency um, of matches and in practice that uh, I believe has improved this year. Um, but we, we need to still keep going. You said that there were some opportunities for him from now on. What do you see as realistic expectations from now on for his career and uh, what do you think about his opportunity to, to win big titles from now on? I mean, from my side, I what I genuinely believe is that he can still have the best years of his career now. I think it's... Uh, um, you know, 32 years of age. He's in physically, he's in great shape. Um, he will have and should have a lot of experience on the tour. And, and I think if he uses that experience in the right way, that, look, I think the tour is in a, in a moment where, you know, Federer has obviously retired. Nadal is not around. Um, some of those top names that have been around the last 10, 12 years for him are not there now. There's some excellent players young ones coming but actually I think there's a there's a great opportunity for him to have the best years and that would include winning big titles for sure I, I, I believe that do, do we have time for one more question yep yeah definitely uh, okay I, I'm curious uh, about how how your team works I mean um, uh, who's in charge of what because both of you are very experienced coaches and uh, Grigor is very experienced player so uh, from a uh, like, if I'm a fan, I, I would be curious who is in charge or what, <laughs> who is the boss? <laughs> sure, uh, there's definitely no boss in the team and that's that's a good thing, right? And and that's that's why I think the, the team works well. Uh, there is no egos in the team and we work very much as a unit all together. Uh, everyone understands their role. Obviously, Jamie and I are leading the, let's say, the tennis uh, side of the, of the performance. Obviously, there is Seb running the 
the fitness and the and the physical conditioning uh and then yeah uh greg was uh, running the the chiropractor department which was uh greg uh greg just stopped with rigor actually and, and we added uh mark boada to the team uh so but everyone has a role uh, and, and and their focus and, and we work all together as a team obviously for jamie and i uh we're both rigorous tennis coaches and and the only difference is that jamie's at some events and i'm at some events uh but uh we have daily contact we speak hours a day uh, when I'm there or when Jamie is there. So, uh, yeah, we all work as a unit, which is the most important thing in a team, particularly when you have two tennis coaches or two fitness coaches. You need uh, you need it to feel like one for the player, obviously with different personalities and, and maybe with a different way of delivering the message, but the message has to be exactly the same and otherwise it doesn't work. And, uh, and I'm very comfortable with the team. Uh, I mean, I was already in the past from 2016 to 2019, uh, I yeah, I love Seb. I think he's one of the best fitness trainers in the world, and and I and I enjoy working with him very much. And and then when I I got the call from Rigor to uh, yeah to 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 get the team back together, uh, yeah, my my first uh, port of call was Jamie. Was Jamie? We have known him for a long time, and and luckily uh, for me and luckily for the team, uh, he agreed to join because uh, I was convinced that it was going to work. I mean, obviously, Rigor didn't know Jamie at the time very well. And he asked me, look, how do you think it's going to work? And I told him, Gregor, trust me, it's going to work. Uh, uh, just trust me on this one. Uh, and, and, and I'm very glad that we were able to put, the, the, to put this team together because for me, the main, the main focus is always to make sure that there are no holes in the team and that the message being delivered to Gregor is exactly the same one, regardless of who's there, who's there with him that week. So, uh, yeah, to answer your question, there's, there's no boss. Obviously, Jamie and I uh, lead the team. Uh, in terms of scheduling and 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 guidance uh, for Seb and, and the chiropractor, but at the same time, uh, we take in their advice and their suggestions uh, as important uh, as ours. So uh, yeah, overall, uh, we all work as one. It looks like uh, he's <coughs> a little bit more tournaments under your guidance. Is it something that we can expect expect also for the future, more 2050 and so on? Yeah, I think so. I think. Um... Yeah, the simple answer is yes. I think we're looking for him to to play some more tournaments and some also some of the smaller tournaments as well. Um, you know, we see that as an important part of the the process to to get him back to the top. You know, to 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 be winning matches and hopefully win uh, tournaments. Maybe you know, maybe win a two fifty at some point. He he's obviously hasn't won one for a while now, and that would be a a goal and something that we believe would would help him a lot. Um, so yeah, absolutely to to play a few more events. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys. Thank you. What we want to take you your time anymore? Okay. Then thank you very much. Thank you. And have a good. All right, guys. Cheers, guys. Have a great night. Bye. Bye.